everyone. There's um, a few of you joining, I can see in the participants side of the screen. Um, I just want to make sure that you can hear us all. There should be a chat feature. Um, so I will just say hi to you all in the chat. If you can hear us all, just um, give us a shout. Yay, Chrissy can hear us, so I hope everyone can hear us. I recognise a few names, Emma, Jan, Moira, I think I've chatted to a few of you on the phone before, so hi to you all, nice to have you um, with us today. As you can see, we've got Nicola with us as well. Hi, Nicola. Hi. Yeah, we've just been, um, we're just all getting used to, uh, to Zoom in these times, everyone's using it now, so thanks for joining us and for bearing with us. We're going to be having a chat with um, Nicola about her experience. She is a Salesforce consultant, right? That's her job title. And um, that is, project manager, but yeah, project manager. Okay, that is the kind of area that a lot of our um, super mums who come on the program want to go into, and you're there already doing it for us, which is great. So, we just want to hear a bit about your experience, really, and especially now as you've been through the ASMIN program, like I have, um, but you've also gone one step further and started with Heather on the consultancy course, right? Yeah, yeah, we want to have um, a chat and find out a little bit more about that. So, um, yeah, do you want to go ahead and give yourself, um, give a brief introduction to yourself and where you're working now, and then we can go back and talk a little bit about your journey to how you got there. Okay, so I work for a charity called Latitude Global Volunteering, and they're based in Reading in Berkshire. I live in Dover in the southeast of Kent, and um, I've worked for Latitude for five years, actually. So Latitude is a a company that sends young people around the world to volunteer so we have offices in about 14 different countries so Argentina, Ecuador, Greece, Poland, Japan, Australia, New Zealand and you know, we recruit young people from different countries and we send them around the world to volunteer. So I've been working with them for five years and when I started I was um, an assistant manager managing a group of volunteer coordinators whose day job is to kind of prepare young people to go and volunteer overseas. And then through the course of the five years, I've done the admin course with Salesforce Supermums, or Supermums as you are now. And then when I went back to work after maternity leave, I changed roles and I kind of half did my old role and I half did the Salesforce project manager role. Um, and now I've moved over to being full-time Salesforce project manager with them. And I implemented Salesforce to help us manage our operations globally, because before that we were using spreadsheets basically. Yep, okay great thanks very much for that so when you were thinking about doing the super mums course a lot of people are kind of the kind of people who often watch this webinar are just thinking about it in the early stages of thinking about doing the course kind of particularly with that admin course to begin with what kind of made you decide okay i can do this and bite the bullet and go for it well i had used salesforce when i first started working at last year we actually ran a volunteering program that used salesforce Mm -hmm. That was my first introduction to it. So before that, I had basically, I've worked in the um, non-profit sector for about 13 years now, and I've always worked on volunteering programs, and I've always used spreadsheets. And when I started working at last year, we had Salesforce. So this was like an amazing eye-opener for me, because I realized just how much more efficiently you could run a program when you have Salesforce. And I, especially as I was managing then a team of about six people, um, so I used Salesforce to support them. And so I really got into the reporting side of things. I'd never, ever had anything that helped me to report so amazingly. So I really love Salesforce. In fact, we all love Salesforce. And when that project finished, also our, our use of Salesforce ended um, because we were giving it, we were subcontracting on a project and Salesforce came with it. So when we ended the project, Salesforce ended. Um, of course, we still on a day-to-day -day basis send young people around the world to volunteer, but we went back to our normal way of operating, which was there was kind of an access database that wasn't being used very well globally because it wasn't meeting people's needs. So everyone was using their own spreadsheets. So from that moment, I kind of started campaigning to get Salesforce back. And quite a lot of the team had moved on by that point. I think I was the only person who'd used Salesforce left in the UK office. So I was always campaigning my manager to get Salesforce. 
And of course, he just kept thinking it's too expensive. We'd never be able to afford it. You know, no one really understood it or what it was. So I just used to go on about it every day, <laughs> every <laughs> day. <laughs> and when we had problems at work, you know, oh, I can't report on this. I need this information. I said, well, if we had Salesforce, we'd be able to do that. So, I mean, they were obviously very sick of hearing this from me, but I didn't stop. I used to say things like, if I win the lottery, I'm going to buy you Salesforce. I'm going to learn how to do Salesforce. And I'm going to implement it for you. And in the end, that's what happened. So I went on maternity leave and I was looking for opportunities to retrain because I still love doing what I'm doing, but I wanted a more flexible career. Now I have a baby. Mm-hmm. So I was looking for opportunities to kind of stay in the nonprofit sector, but have a more flexible career. And I just, I literally Googled something like new mom, retrain, nonprofit. Um, and a tweet came up from super mums saying, get a flexible, well-paid career, and learn Salesforce. And I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe what I'm seeing. So I clicked on it. I watched a webinar that Heather had done that kind of introduced you to what the admin program was. And I thought, I can't believe this is actually a thing. This is, this is meant for me. So I just signed up straight away. And um, that was in January. I think the course started in February, 2018. And so I did it when I was on maternity leave. And then I finished the course in July, August, and then I returned to work in September. And okay. when I phoned up my boss to say, you know, I want to come back to work now. That's when I said, but I'll tell you what I've been doing. And I said, I, I've actually learned Salesforce, which he thought was quite funny. Um, I said, I want to implement Salesforce for you. And by that time, we had a CEO who was new. I think he just started really before I went on maternity leave. And he was thinking of getting Salesforce. So it kind of all came together. So I went up to Reading and we had a meeting. Um, and that's when he said, do you really think you can do this for us? And I said, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. So back yourself. I like the confidence. Good. Yeah. I mean, I was really scared, but it was something I've been wanting to do for so long. So yeah. I said, yeah, I definitely think I can do it. Um, and he then said, okay, you can come back to work part-time doing your old job and part-time Salesforce project manager and implement this for us. So that's how it all came together, really. I mean, it was just like everything aligned for me at the same time. So That's fantastic. And to have that confidence to keep pushing for it as well, it's really, really great. And I think similarly to me, you came to it from a solutions perspective because my background happens to be charities and non-profit as well and I really liked what it could do and what, what it could provide me as a user so I thought hang on I want to learn more about this and I would definitely say that I am not what you would call a techie person and I still surprise myself sometimes by the fact that I'm now quite confident in this field like sometimes when I'm speaking to people who are thinking about the course on the phone they have a few reservations about oh is it going to be too technical for me kind of did you have any reservations about that and how kind of did you if you did how did you get over it and how did you find the course well I mean I've got no technological background whatsoever. So when I was at school, kind of the extent of the IT teaching was, you know, teaching you how to type, you know, you had the pictures of the hands with the letters on the fingers (laughs) and you have to learn how to type. That's the extent of my IT training before this. So I'm the kind of person that other people would say to stay away from technology because if I touch it, it breaks kind of thing. So I definitely didn't ever see myself doing anything like this. Um, But I guess the, the bonus for me was that I already understood what Salesforce looked like from an end user perspective. So I think that's a big bonus when you start this, because when you start learning how to build it, and of course you're kind of learning from the sales perspective as well, aren't you, when you're really doing, and so if you're in from the non-profit sector, it's quite hard for you to even get your head around sales. Yeah. Um, but I had an idea of what an end user would be seeing and what they would be doing. And it's just, I don't really see it as like techie, I just see it as like a puzzle. You're just kind of putting a puzzle together. And so if you're the kind of person that likes doing puzzles, then um, it just, it's like building things and, and, oh, that doesn't work. Let me try it that way. Oh, that doesn't work. Let me try that. Oh, it works that way. Okay. So it's just, it's kind of fun. It's really fun. Yeah. And you always have to um, keep learning and be willing to keep problem solving. It's not going to be one of those things. Oh, I'm going to know everything. I'm going to know all of Salesforce at some point. You're never going to get to that stage. You just have to really enjoy the process. And I think yeah. you've explained that really well, which is nice. The more you learn, the more you realise you're never, ever going to learn all of what Salesforce does, are you? You never yeah, are. Yeah, exactly. It's about having the confidence to go and find the information and be part of the community where you can get the um, answers you may need. And perhaps we can go on to talk about that a little bit later. Um, I just want to circle back to what you were saying about, um, you know, being from a non-profit background and then having to get your head around sales and 
I also, I think on my work experience project, for example, I became a lot more confident in what I could bring to the table because I was working on a nonprofit project because that's what the work experience things are. And that's where my kind of experience then suddenly came into use. So, and I was really surprised how transferable my previous experience, even non-Salesforce related was to that. And that's kind of what I always try and share with people on the course is you're bringing everything from before. So no matter what industry you've come from almost, there's going to be a way that you can use Salesforce. So we found there's been lots of transferable stuff from your past that has really helped you be be a better Salesforce admin and consultant and project manager. Yeah, I, th I think I don't feel like I've changed career doing this. I feel like I've just built on my career that was already there. So what I wanted to do, I love working with volunteers. I love working on volunteer programs. I've done it for the last 13 years and I want to still be able to do that. I just wanted a way to be able to do that better and to have a more flexible career. And so that's what Salesforce provides you with because basically all you need is your laptop and Wi-Fi, and you can do work. And you can do that on any project because there's so many parts to Salesforce. So if you're from a marketing background, you can do it. If you're from a finance background, you can use it for that. If you're from a nonprofit background, you can use it for that. So, and I found that the, um, the case study, so the way that the admin course was set up is you have your webinar where you kind of learn how to do something, like create an object or a field. And then you have a case study where you have to do that for a theoretical business. And that makes more sense in your head. You're like, oh, I understand why a business might want this field on Salesforce. And then when you do your work experience, you build on that again, because it's really real life. And um, I, my project, same as you, my project was um, a nonprofit, obviously, but it was to help a nonprofit implement Salesforce to help them manage their volunteering program. So, of course, that's completely aligned 100 percent with what I've been doing my whole life or whole career. So I could understand that. So I had to build something that had an online form where somebody could apply to become a volunteer. And then that would go straight into Salesforce. So I built Salesforce to have all the right fields in it, built the form to have all the right fields in it and then map them to it. So then I could see how somebody who was interested in volunteering could fill out this form and how it could all go straight into Salesforce and how there could then be some. I built some automation on top of that to do automate some tasks. So, you know, you can imagine if you're managing volunteers like I do, I get an application in and then I have to email them back saying, thank you so much for your application. I'll get back to you in three days for an interview. But I set up Salesforce to do that all automatically. So then it was like massive light bulb moments where you're like, oh, I get it now. I can see how Salesforce can work for a nonprofit. Yeah, perfect. Thank you for that. I just want to add in, by the way, to anyone I didn't say at the beginning, um, if you've got any questions, do pop them in chat or there's a Q&A box, either one. I'll keep an eye on them and we'll try and get to them. Um, if they're relevant as we go, I'll try and add them in. If not, I'll try and come to some at the end. So if you do have any questions for Nicola or for myself about specifics of the training, do um, pop some questions in chat or Q&A and we'll get to them as we go. So that's... Um, you know, it's been really great to hear your journey to admin, but I know we do have a few people who are um, admins or doing the admin course at the moment on the call as well. And you've obviously taken it up to the, to the next level. So you've started to add on all these consultancy skills. So I guess, first of all, what made you think that that might be kind of a good idea? Uh, so when I started the Salesforce implementation, so obviously I had to do everything from scratch on my own. So when I went back to work and said, I want to implement Salesforce for you, and he said, yes, go ahead, do it. I just had to do everything on my own. And I was like, what do I do now? So we actually paid for a support package from Economic Change. So I had a consultant who was there to support me for a certain number of days. So I had to spread that out as much as I possibly could. And literally at the beginning, I was just like, I know the different like tabs I want to have in Salesforce, but I don't know the relationships I, that should be between each other. You know, <laughs> it was literally at that stage. And so I would say to her, what do I need to do? And she'd help me. And somehow I was successful in implementing this global instance for us. But I mean, a lot of it, I probably did it the wrong way, the first way around. Yeah. And, and it was so hard, like for the first six months, there was a lot of sleepless nights when I was just thinking, why did I say I could do this? Because I am in over my head here. Um, and we had success. So now everybody across the globe uses Salesforce to manage all the applications that are coming in and put them through the pre-departure stage. Then I wanted to carry on using Salesforce to help manage volunteers when they're in country. And I haven't had as much success with that because I haven't been able to get the buy-in for it. Um, and it's just, it's just from 
all of that, I just realized that there was a lot of things I needed to learn. So I needed to learn a lot more about how to gather requirements professionally and how to map out the project properly. Um, what was, you know, I basically bit off more than I could chew. I should have said I could do a lot less in the time, but I didn't know that because I was so inexperienced. So it's from doing that and then realizing I've, I've, I've told them I could deliver too much. Like what should I have told them I could deliver within six months? So all of these things I've learned um, the hard way that I needed to know. So I always want, and, and working on your own as an admin, of course, as you know, there's so much support in the Salesforce ecosystem, people willing to help you. But if you're, if you're a lone admin, who do you learn from really? You know, who can you really learn all the, the small ins and outs of how to do a project? Because no one else in my organization understands Salesforce. So how do I learn from them? So I just wanted to, I wanted to get kind of a company that could support me to learn all these things. So as soon as I found out you guys were doing the consultancy course, which I think you were advertising from probably summer last year, mm -hmm. ever since then I wanted to do it. And I've wanted to, why, why I want to be a consultant as well is because it's really great having this in-depth knowledge about your own Salesforce org, but there's so many products out there that we're never going to use in our own org and I want to learn them. So how do you learn about all these different things unless you kind of become a consultant, work on different projects? So, but definitely, the, and the, the consultancy course so far is definitely living up to expectations. So every time I watch another video, on something like planning your CRM, um, planning your CRM project. I think, oh, that's what I should have done. <laughs> oh, I wish I'd done it that way. Oh, okay. So it's just everything that I've looked in it so far, everything I've seen has been like massively relevant. Uh, and I think, I wish I'd known it before, but also having done a Salesforce implementation now, um, when they're talking, when, you, when Heather's talking about these different things in videos, I've got real life experience of having done it, even if I didn't do it the right way. Yeah. Um, so I can reflect on what I did and what I would now like to do if I did it all over again. Yeah, it's a kind of a constant learning journey. And I think it's interesting to reflect back on what you said there when you were going through the project process of having this moments where you were having sleepless nights and like, what have I done to like, obviously there must have been a real high when people started using it and the success of that. And I think you go through that on the learning journey as well as when you're actually in work of, oh, this is amazing, like, oh, yeah, I can get the hang of this. And then you realize how much there is to learn to it. And you're like, oh, no, there's so much. And then you have some successes with things like your work experience projects, which then bring you back on that high again. But definitely Salesforce is all about the continual learning journey, even yeah. when you have all the certificates. <laughs> and I love it. I absolutely love it. But the other, the other reason why I think people should do the consultancy course, or why it's useful, is I can't imagine that you could ever be an admin and not need those consultancy skills because people are always coming to you, aren't they, saying, oh, hi, I've got this new business project that I want to do and I want it to be in Salesforce. Or, you know, I've got this report that I want to do. And they're always asking you for different things out of Salesforce. And unless you have the consultancy skills, how do you deal with that properly? So yeah. how, do yeah. you, how do you decide which are, the, which are the important things that you can go ahead with now? Who, who, who do you, how do you get the buy-in from senior managers to, to make that happen? So I, I think that even if you are an admin at a company and you're always going to be an admin at a company and you always want to be an admin at a company, if you have these consultancy skills, you could be a better, more competent admin. Yeah, and I think that's something, yeah, you picked up on a really um, important point there. And part of the reason that Heather created the course as well is not just for people who want to be consultants per se, but also, yeah, that admin role, even though it's called, you know, there are lots of roles out there called Salesforce admin, but really it covers such a broad base and it can look very different in different organizations. But the one thing you're always doing is consulting with users. That is what you're doing all the time. So this course with the consultancy skills that we talk about even if you're not thinking about being a consultant tomorrow if you want to improve your work as an admin it's going to give you a lot of really useful information do you want to talk a little bit um about just very briefly the kind of stuff you've covered so far because you're what are you mid how long have you been doing the course now what, at what point are you in the course um well it's like a rolling course isn't it so you can yeah. kind of join it anytime so i've only joined recently but because i'm not actually working at the moment so i've really been I've really been doing Getting it through like, the stuff, yeah. all the time, yeah. Um, because it's in, so it's in sort of bite-sized videos that are probably between about five, 10 minutes up to one hour. And most of them are around 30 minute mark. So 
I kind of, you know, I'll, I'll play with my daughter for a while and then I'll sit here in front of Peppa Pig and watch another <laughs> video. So it's, and then when I watch one video, I want to watch the next one because I'm like, oh, that was really useful. And we're going through a big change at work at the moment, which probably lots of people are in their you yeah. know, workplace because of what's happening. Um, and I can see there's going to be lots of changes needed in Salesforce. So again, I'm thinking I need to plan now how I'm going to make these changes, um, you know, and this is my chance to do it the right way. So the first part of the course is kind of an onboarding section, um, just telling you how the course is going to run. Then there's um, the planning, the CRM section. So that talks about what you've got to do before you even start your project. So the big sort of light bulb moment for me there was, you know, there's an awful lot of time planning before you actually do anything in terms of the build. And I think I jumped into my build too quickly and could have done with a lot more planning. Um, but I wonder if the senior leaders at my workplace would have let me spend much more time on the planning because they wanted to see, you know, action. See some so results, yeah. I think these are probably going to be things you have to deal with your whole life if you're a consultant, aren't they? So there's planning the CRM, which is really interesting, and talking about who you need to talk to and how you get the buy-in, all that kind of thing. There's an agile project management um, section to it, which I have not actually ever had any proper project management training. Um, although I've worked on projects my whole career. So uh, learning kind of the agile project management strategy, which seems to be the big one at the moment, that's been really good, re really good actually, because I, I realized that I've kind of been working in an agile way, just have, um, but definitely didn't know that or know how to do it properly. So that's really good because I think that would be really good for increasing your confidence when you kind of go to talk to a client and talk to them about the way you're going to run this program um, there's a section on gathering requirements which is really really interesting because of course you listen to people and ask them what they want and the way i record it is not the way <laughs> <laughs> it says in the in the course so it's given you it gives you lots of information about different ways to gather requirements and gives you some um kind of like templates to use and that kind of thing I think that all that stuff is really important as well, isn't it? Because although you're alone, admin, if you ever need to then start working with other people, you may have your little way that works for you. But if you've got to translate that into then working with a team or working with users, working with developers, you need to have a tool set to be able to communicate that, I guess, to other people. Yeah. And for me, it worked like I've designed it. I've gathered the requirements, designed it, built it all on my own. Um, and I haven't documented everything perfectly. And as I was doing it, I was asking people, how do you document these things properly? And people were giving me little snippets of advice. And I was like, I'm, I don't think I'm doing it correctly. <laughs> but how do I, I don't know what, you know, what else to do. So I always knew that the way I was doing things was not in term, in line with industry best practice. And that's what I really wanted to learn. And that's what I feel I'm getting from the course. And it's all kind of laid out for you, um, like, Really, it's, it's very logical, very practical um, kind of way it's all laid out for you with videos and homework and handouts of templates to use. So I think they're ones that I would definitely use myself going forward. Oh, um, so that section's really interesting, I think. And then there's a change management section as well. So of course, you know, one of the things, the biggest challenges I had with my implementation is with there's people at the organization that are dead keen for change because they hate the way we do things. Um, and then there's other people who have like figured out their own way of doing things and they're fine with that and they don't want you to mess with it. Yeah. And you're saying, I know you're okay with it, but we're a global company. Like everybody else needs to be working the same way for this to be a success. And they didn't really want to budge. So there was a lot of change management. So there was different ways I handled that. Um, and, but it, I didn't again, you know, I was like, what is the way that you would do this in real life if you're an excellent, you know, Salesforce consultant? And I was trying to find my way and just sheer persistence, I think I got there in the end. I found one senior manager who really bought into the system and then the whole thing changed. You know, the whole thing changed for me then because she was the one that in senior leadership meetings, she could say when they were struggling to find details about what was happening, she could say, I can tell you because it's on Salesforce. Look, I'll look now. You can look on your homepage and you'll see the same thing. There's a dashboard there. And then it all started to go in there. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, you know, I managed to get sort of the change to happen in the end. But it was really hard work. Um, I imagine it's always hard work. But now from doing the course, I've kind of got logical steps that I would need to take and follow to be able to achieve that. 
and before sometimes it felt like I was scratching around in the dark really to to make it happen you know yeah so it's I guess it sounds like you're getting all the tools you need to be able to put that knowledge that you kind of gained from the admin course actually into practice to be able to translate that yeah. into actually making it happen <laughs> yeah it's kind of like a I say it's really good as well I think it's really good that I've had the actual experience you know so I've had some Salesforce implementation experience now um, so it's really good to reflect on that so when you're going through the course at the end of each section Heather will give you a little bit of homework and, and it also another good thing um, you know in the admin course we cover the CDS the company CDS and homework's based around that it's, it's the same in the consultancy course it kind of follows on from that um, so if you've done the admin course you'll already understand that so you can use CDS as the example, or you can reflect back on your own projects that you've done in the past or ones you're doing now. So I'm kind of reflecting on all of that because I'm thinking about the implementation I've already done. I'm thinking about the changes that are upcoming that are gonna to need to be done. And I'm thinking about CDS from the perspective that it's a different type of company as well. So it's, yeah. it's good, isn't it, to get the, to sort of think around different types of organizations and, and their needs. So CDS's needs are different to ours and it's good to reflect on that. Oh, that's good. So yeah, people, we have a different range of people who might be interested. I know just from some of you, I can see who are on the call, people who are doing the admin course and who are maybe thinking about going straight on to consultancy. So they might not have loads of experience yet, in which case we have this case study example company that you can work on. But if you are in work, you can apply it directly to your day to day kind of stuff that you've got going on as well, which is, which is a really nice combination, I think. Yeah, and there's a mix of people on the course. So there is somebody who doesn't have the real life implementation going on now to reflect on. So uses CDS. There's other people that are already working as consultants, I think. So it's yeah, a, it's a real mix of people on the course. So. And let's actually just touch on that for a minute, just in terms of the way the course is structured. It's a little bit different to, for example, the admin course where you have the taught webinars and then you have some homework, isn't it? So you have um, some recorded material and then you have this kind of a bit more open session with Heather where you discuss your learning. Do you want to explain a little bit more about how that works? Yeah, so you can join, I think, at any point. So I've literally yeah. just joined in um, a couple of weeks ago. I've had one coaching session um, and that was led by a consultant from Economic Change and it was about Service Cloud, actually. Um, and so, but I've listened to all the other coaching calls as well. So the idea is that you're going through the, the subject matter at your own time and then you go to the coaching call on a Thursday, which is a one hour coaching call with a light bulb moment and two questions to ask. So it doesn't really matter where you are in the course because you can have that light bulb moment and questions about anything. Um, we can all like learn from each other and reflect on that. Um, but also the courses all kind of build on each other. So it's like you do the CRM planning and then the agile project management kind of layers on that and then requirements kind of layers on that and the change management layers on that. So they're not, they're not all completely independent of each other. You do go through the course, it, it unlocks as you go through it. So you can't skip ahead. I'm one of those people that always likes to skip ahead. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you can't skip ahead. So you, you do unlock and then go on to the next one, but they all kind of just go together. So it doesn't yeah, really yeah. matter where you are. You, I don't think anyone could feel like they've been left behind. And you're yeah. all just learning from people. If people are a little bit ahead of you, it gives you a learning opportunity, right? To learn from their experience and the experience of other people that are on the course. Yeah. So if you've got people on there that are already have already done an implementation and already are consultants, it's really interesting to hear about their experience because it's going to be different from your own. So you can learn something from it. And it's that thing as well, if you are like in a new role or you're trying to get into a role or if you're one of these lone admins, right, then it's that chance just to speak to people who are in the same sort of position as you and who are out there, you know, trying to get into Salesforce, trying to make their way. And I think um, there's a really good webinar that I think might come on um, the London's Calling YouTube at some point about the different kind of roles, either like being suited to being a lone admin, like you were saying, being able to do all of the bits of the project, or are you more suited to specialising in a particular area and being part of a team? And I think this in particular is really good, you know, it touches on both, but especially if you're just at the beginning of your journey or a lone admin, it's really helpful to have that sense of community around you to learn from. Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm a, I'm a lone admin, basically. And I work from home and I work from home full time. So I have never, I think in the last year and a half of working as Salesforce project manager, I've been to my office about five times. 
So I'm always just working from home. So it's like I crave to talk to other people about Salesforce. But of course, the other guys that I work with, they're not into Salesforce, obviously, as much as I am. So doing the course is different because you can, you know, really get into your Salesforce talk with other people who yeah. actually understand what you're going on about. Someone will actually listen to you. I think I managed to um, bore my husband with it so much that he's there now getting his charity to get Salesforce as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> People who like Salesforce really like Salesforce. <laughs> That's cool. Um, yeah. Let's just um, do a little bit further into you just started talking about kind of your day to day. And I know certainly when I was thinking about, OK, well, if I switch to Salesforce, what am I actually going to end up doing? And it's all very well. We talk about these fairly high level things like requirements gathering and project management and, um, you know, doing the actual admin work. But what does that mean for you day to day? Like, what does your typical day look like if you have one? I don't really have a typical day because I work, I work full time, but I work totally flexibly. So I make up my own hours. So I do have, um, I used to have a Tuesday meeting with my manager, um, but I don't even do that anymore now. So I basically, as long as I hit my targets on time, I'm allowed to, you know, set my own timetable. And I basically base it around my two year old. And, um, in terms of like the tasks, I have I kind of set Monday aside to do the, bo the stuff that I find boring, which is the more kind of routine admin stuff. So I do the backup on a Monday and um, we use a, a form app to get um, applications through. So I check through the form app on a Monday and all the people that have sort of partly saved their applications to come back later. I send them out to colleagues around the world so they can follow up on it. Um, so they're all the kind of things that I find more boring because they're more routine. So the thing I like doing is finding new solutions to help. So what I've done so far is built Salesforce so that all our applications um, come in online and they trigger off automation that also then sends out other forms. We have loads of forms. So there's so much information we have to collect from volunteers. So before it was a lot of admin for the volunteer coordinators, but we managed to reduce that a lot now. So on a Wednesday, I have quite a routine meeting with the volunteer coordinators to talk about what they're doing and kind of we're moving through their process. And as we're moving through their process, we're just sense checking Salesforce to make sure all the right fields are in there and we're adding in automation. And so that's a, I guess that's a routine because that's every Wednesday night I do that. But it's fun because we're again, it's kind of gathering requirements and designing new solutions. And at the moment, what I've been trying to do is build out Salesforce to help support the program managers to manage volunteers when they're in country. So that's kind of new. I've been working this for a long time because they've been a bit harder to sell to. So um, that's all about really like gathering requirements, designing new solutions, building something in a sandbox, demoing it to people. And because we're in different time zones, you know, I have to meet people at different times. So I could be working really early in the morning, really late at night, but I do that around my daughter, so that's fine. So I guess I'm kind of happiest when I'm tinkering around in Salesforce trying to find a solution. And then I'll be, you know, putting that out into production, doing demos, training people, doing training manuals, training videos. Um, but it's, it's really hard to say any routine thing because it's, it's just different all the time. I might spend a week updating all of our forms, online forms, because uh, where we've got different opportunities for volunteering programs in country. So I might spend a whole week doing that because we have so many online forms. And the next week, something completely different. So it's hard, How really do hard you to say. kind of, what are the kind of positives and some, you know, realistically negatives of that? Because I think, um, especially at the moment, loads more people are working from home, right? Even those people who aren't used to doing it. And I definitely think when you start working from home, which I did about a year ago, it's not always as easy as people think. There are, you know, costs and benefits to it. Kind of, how have you found it working from home? How long have you been working from home? Um, two, well, two since my, I think it's about two years now. Well, since I went back to work after maternity leave, my daughter's just two and a half. So I've been working at home all that time. Actually, the company was going that way anyway. So when I found out my boss and said, I want to come back to work after maternity leave, but I don't want to move back to Reading. I want to stay in Dover. <laughs> because it's near my parents and they can help me with childcare. And he said, that's okay, because we're all going remote anyway. So we've all gone that way. Um, and I love it. It is, it's not all easy because my child is at home a lot of the time and now she's two and a half. I'll be in a meeting and she'll be like knocking on my door screaming, mommy, mommy, mommy. So it, it can be quite hard. And my husband works 
different times. He's been working nights. Um, so it isn't always easy, but I actually love it. So the only thing is sometimes I think I should get out more and meet people in real life because I wonder if I'm going to lose those skills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's important. And that is kind of a great thing about this Salesforce community, which we said we'd come back to actually, and we have, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. In that it is kind of a great place to be and that there are lots of those opportunities out there. Like, have you been to many events or got to know people through Salesforce? Like, because Not you really. are <laughs> no, not really. So I went to the world tour last year, I think. So I think that's the first time I actually met Heather in real life mm -hmm. and connected with the other super mums who were on the admin course at the same time as me. So that was really cool because we'd only ever sort of linked on chatter. So that was nice to meet them in real life face to face. Um, and apart from that, I went to Dreamforce, which was in December. So I went and did a presentation there. And that was the first time I'd done anything in real life for ages. I was so scared. <laughs> yeah. and it, was, it was a great opportunity, but I was really nervous. And so I met a few people in real life again then. But otherwise, everything I do really is, is online. It's virtual. So I've been trying to find like a user group in my local area. Um, but the nearest one is still quite far from me. So I haven't been able to go. I would like to connect with people in real life, but it hasn't happened yet. So I keep saying to myself, I will do it. I will do it at some point. Of course, now we're in lockdown. Yeah, so. yeah. Not the ideal time to do that. <laughs> no. Yeah, you everything is virtual for me. <laughs> yeah, and thanks for doing that. Yeah, so Nicola represented us at Dreamforce to you, which was a, it's kind of a summary session in London of the big event that happens in San Francisco mm -hmm. and um, told your trailblazer story which was uh, really really fantastic to share um much like you have done just now but in a shorter format i guess um shared your story so thank you for doing that and thank you for being part of super Mums. um i just want to do a shout out to everyone again if you are on the call there's still a few quite a few of you out there if you've got any questions do type them in the chat box i just saw um martha i think you raised the hand so i wondered if you had a question do type it in the chat box if you do have a question and we'll come to those um I guess uh, quick fire questions. Um, what's the the best and and worst thing about your job now? Um, the bet I really love working flexibly. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. Like I just see, I've got this dream that I'm going to travel the world at some point, being a Salesforce consultant. All I need is my laptop and Wi-Fi, and I can work. So. I've got this dream of that's what I always wanted to do. Really, I was working towards how do I get a career where I can literally do it from anywhere. Um, so I love being able to work flexibly. I also, before when I did the job at Latitude, I worked mainly with um, the UK team, which they're all fantastic, so that was good. But doing Salesforce, I'm not particularly on any team at the moment. I'm kind of working independently of all the teams, so I connect with all of them. So I work with everyone globally. Um, and I love that because I love being able to work from people of different countries and cultures. So that's really interesting for me. And I just love Salesforce. I just love like doing automating stuff in Salesforce. And, as, you know, when you automate something that's been a, an absolute headache for your team for ages and then you say, look, I've done this. And if you just press this button, it's going to send that format automatically to somebody. It's going to come back into Salesforce and go there and you're going to get a notification. You don't have to do anything anymore. And they go, wow, that's amazing. That making um, people's lives easier. They always love that at work, right? <laughs> They're going to make yeah. it easier. And once so then, people realise that that's what you're doing, I think that's yeah. what you change to the buy-in isn't it once they think once they go from thinking oh is this another thing I've got to figure out to oh this is going to make my life easier that's the switch you need to make isn't it yeah and I think challenging things I mean challenging things just doing the whole Salesforce implementation with no experience was really challenging um challenging to get buy-in from people who aren't that into change that's really difficult so there was quite a few people who blocked it basically and were like no I don't want to do this and then you think what do I do um, and on a day-to-day -day basis, ch most challenging things, I don't know, really, I really like my job. <laughs> but <laughs> probably, right. probably, again, when there's parts of Salesforce that aren't being used, you know, there's part, part of my project's been really successful, and there's another part that I think hasn't been successful, because I haven't got people doing what I really want them to do. And we use Conga Composer, and I don't think we're really getting the return on investment in that, because people aren't using it exactly how I want them to. And I can make it do that for them, I just need the feedback for them, but they're not giving it to me, and I've tried and tried. So I guess that when you kind of feel like, you know that there's something you really want to do that would change, you know, would be a massive bonus for the company, but you just can't 
get the buy-in to do it right now when you want to. Maybe now's not the right time, but I'm always jumping ahead of myself. So there's things I want to do and I can't get people to do it. And I just think, oh, <laughs> so that's, that's the biggest challenge, I guess. It's very inspiring though to hear your story of how far you've come so far. So when did you start the Super Mums course again, remind me? The admin course started in February 2018. 2018, yeah. So that's really quite quick to have, you know, had this really fantastic journey where you're now really taken ownership of an instance and rolled it out in an organisation and are kind of now taking your next steps with this consultancy course. And I guess kind of getting towards wrapping up with some of the final question is, kind of what's next for you then? So you're working your way through the consultancy course. Have you got your eyes on any more SERPs or? Okay, so yeah, I'm obsessed with, so I'm obsessed with trailhead. So <laughs> I, I like to do trailhead badges, but at the moment I'm doing the advanced admin, I'm studying for the advanced admin exam. So yesterday I did the free certification day from Salesforce um, for the advanced admin and got my coupon code. So I'm trying to figure out how to do the exam from home you know using my inbuilt webcam so yeah. doing that doing the consultancy course and then also i this week salesforce are doing npsp um kind of webinars but they're at 11 o'clock at night so i'm saving them up to do them at the weekend so just lots of studying really and i'm going to be doing the npsp trail mix to try and learn and lots of badges through that so then I want to become a consultant and eventually I keep telling everybody my dream is to be a United Nations volunteer and to do uh, like Pan-African Salesforce implementation to help on their projects or something like that. Oh wow, <laughs> fantastic. That sounds amazing. That's yeah. And I'm sure to be honest, given how far you've come so far that you'll, you'll get there if you keep working towards it. And this is kind of one of the points I want to make is that it's about keeping learning within the ecosystem. You're going to get those just rewards and get to work on some brilliant projects and get the flexibility and the kind of jobs that you want. If you keep learning and keep being dedicated to, to keeping progressing with your trailhead, with your certifications, because with those comes more opportunity. And um, so I think that is an important thing. So thank you for that. I have actually just had a question come in. Um, from Martha, who's new to Salesforce, um, doesn't have any IT experience, like a lot of people who come on our course, so don't see that as a hindrance, but she does ask, what are the skills you need to be a Salesforce admin? So I guess we can both chip in here. So if we're not, I guess if we're not particularly talking about technical skills, but kind of all those other skills you need to be a good admin, have you got any that you would pull out in particular that you think are particularly important, kind of those transferable skills? I think you need to be good at building relationships with people. So if you're good at talking to people and yeah, building relationships, getting them to trust you. I really had to get people to trust me, you know, to say, oh, well, I think that's why I, I did have success with the implementation. I'd worked at my workplace for years. They all knew me and knew if I said I could do something, I'll do it. So, you know, I built up trust with people and I'm good at kind of talking to people, building relationships, finding out what they want. Um, so there's that good at problem solving. So I say even before Salesforce, I'm somebody that people would come to with you know, to try and help solve problems. And that just kind of transfers now to Salesforce. So like solving problems in Salesforce. Yeah. I don't know, what else would you say in terms of skills? Yeah, I think one thing you said there that I do always say is the communication skills are really important because people go down the road of thinking this is like something super technical, which yes, you need to learn the technical side of it, but it's, that is all useless if you can't put it into practice. So I think the communication is really important. Um, a good problem solver and, um, detail kind of like attention to detail really I think mm. is quite an important thing and to be kind of okay with that and drilling into some of the detail because there's always things as you go through learning Salesforce it's you've got to be quite um have an ability to work with process as well and for things to go in a logical order and there's steps you take to to achieve yeah. certain things. I always found when I had something difficult that I couldn't figure out in Salesforce or a piece of functionality that I was doing while we were doing the certificate while we were doing the certification like it was always because I hadn't like done the step by step I hadn't checked a box somewhere or you know though so you have to be um yeah logical looking at detail like like the process and like learning as well <laughs> yeah that's true like I've rediscovered my love of learning so I think all the time in my career not really done so many kind of certifications and stuff I was always looking for ones that I could do and there never seemed to be anything massively relevant to my career at the time now with salesforce it's like well <laughs> you start? There's so many. <laughs> yeah there's so much i did the app builder exam as well at the end of last year so oh, well 
I do love learning. And I say you're right about being methodical. Like I've always worked in operations, like on projects, operations. So I'm really into process and I'm really like methodical and organized and kind of practical and logical in the way I do things. So I just think the way my brain works just really kind of sits well with Salesforce. And I can happily spend hours just trying to figure out process builder or flow. But yeah. you know, if you're somebody that likes sitting and doing puzzles for quite a long time, I should, or you know, can concentrate on detail for a long time, then yeah. I guess, yeah, you're right. You have, also, it's good to be able to see the big picture. You know, in my head, I just knew what I wanted Salesforce to look like globally, you know, in a way it's kind of coming together and then you have to drill down into the detail and be able to just build on it build on it build on it i guess it's the way yeah. Brain works. yeah yeah i think that yeah what i i like you likening it to puzzles yeah there's a lot of that's kind of a really good analogy um because it's that idea of getting to the detail having to just keep going to move through a challenge um working in a logical order yeah that all applies so kind of detail driven good communicator like working with process, like making kind of order out of sometimes what can be quite chaotic mm -hmm. <laughs> situations. Um, yeah, they're all absolutely. kind of skills that are really, really helpful to bring to the table. Yeah, I wouldn't even think of it in terms of tech because I think what we have in our head that's technology seems daunting if you're not from that background, but it doesn't even feel, because you know, they say it's clicks, not code. You just go in the back of Salesforce somewhere and tick a box and it enables all this stuff to happen. And then... Yeah it's really easy to do so i don't think you need to worry about the tech part because if you can work a computer then you can probably work the setup area of salesforce you just need to go in and click here and add in there and but it's, it's more about you know i guess a really big bit is is being able to work with people being able to communicate yeah. well with people and find out what they want and what they need and be able to figure something out for them and then relay that back to them in a way that they understand and that is just critical and critical to the success specifically of being a consultant because yes if you're someone who is really into it and you like the technical side you can go on to do things like salesforce developer and that's where you do start doing things like learning code and really getting into the, that technical aspect but especially with the consultancy side that communication and and working with people as well who don't understand the technical side you've got to be able to always put yourself back in that position of before you knew what Salesforce was really, being able to explain it at that at that level as well. And that's a really, really important part of being an effective consultant. So really that communication element, being able to break down quite complex things into the need to know information so you can get the answer or the information that you need back is really important. And that is sort of, it goes back to what is covered in the consultancy course as well. It's like, I think Heather goes into quite specifically like how you can ask questions and who you need to ask and what you need to ask of them to get the information that you, you need. That is some of what is covered in the consultancy course. Mm -hmm. so, uh, thanks for your question, Martha. Really, really great question. Um, I don't think we've got any more coming in right now. So I'm just gonna um, skip on to, yeah, so um, just a quick slide about Supermums really and how much we are growing and expanding. So um, the consultancy course is relatively new. We've been running our admin course for um, since 2016 now. We've got over 200 mums come through the program like Nicola, like myself. Um, you can actually see some more case studies as well. If you head to our website, there's more stories like Nicola's of people in different situations um, where you can hear some audio about what they've been doing and what they're up to. We've got some great volunteer mentors. So if you're part of, especially the admin course, you'll get a one-to-one -one mentor, someone who's experienced in the ecosystem. And actually, Nicola, are you a mentor now? Did mm -hmm. I read that right? Oh, fantastic. How have you found that experience? Yeah, really good. So I wanted to, I wasn't sure whether I'd be skilled enough again or experienced enough to be a mentor. Um, but I put myself forward for it and spoke to Naomi, who kind of reassured me. And it's been a really good experience for me because you know, the people now are doing the same homework that I did two years ago. So it was really nice to see how far I've come and to be able to pass my knowledge on to somebody else. And yeah. you know, part of why I love doing the Salesforce stuff is as well as just being able to inspire other women and other mums to have flexible careers that they enjoy doing. So I wanted to be able to sort of be part of that. So it's been a really good experience for me so far. Oh, um, brilliant. So I would recommend it. Thank you. 
Um, so yeah, so you get a mentor, someone who's uh, working in the Salesforce ecosystem who can guide you through. I had a mentor as well, and I know she was really helpful, not just from the technical standpoint, but of like, I can't do this piece of homework, can you help me? But also the idea of this is what Salesforce is. This is like this thing called the ecosystem, which if you're brand new to Salesforce is quite a thing in itself to get your head around all these uh, trailblazer groups and all the events that happen and this sense of community that you get that you can reach out to for support. Um, she was a great introduction to that for me so you know the mentors can help you in lots of different ways um we've got four different courses in two time zones so we've got people from all over the world joining the webinar and um we've got courses out of the us at the moment as well so they run out of a pacific coast time zone and we've got our emea course out of the uk running um in the mornings it's usually in the mornings in the uk um, and we've got courses in admin, platform developer, if you do want to go down the technical route, the consulting that we've been talking about today, and also marketing cloud. So if any of you are listening who have actually got a background in marketing, it's worth looking at our marketing cloud course as well, because we're looking for um, mums and dads who have a background in marketing, but maybe not any um, of the technical aspects of it to, get to come onto our course and learn how to do marketing automation with us. That's a great new course sponsored by Accenture. And we do have lots of companies involved with us. Um, so whether sponsoring us or partnering with us on different things, there's a few here that will be familiar to you. So obviously Salesforce. We've got our course sponsors. So St. James's Place, big wealth management company sponsor the um, admin course. We've got Accenture who are sponsoring our um, marketing Deloitte Digital uh, on the platform developer and Dyson on the consultancy side and there's a few more here like validity and um, duplicate check and form assembly that if you're not already in Salesforce you may not have heard of yet but these are what we call the ISV partners so they're organizations who have products tech products who work that work with Salesforce and Nicola touched on those earlier and you learn a bit more about those through the admin course and if you get into Salesforce you'll definitely start to know who they are and then we've got our consultancy partners who help us provide the work experience um, you'd be working on so economic change include in islands and also um obviously trailhead and trailhead academy and if you haven't been on trailhead yet then I'd advise you get on there take a look around especially if you're new to Salesforce just there's a few great trails on there to give you an introduction so you can get a look around to what it actually is so you'd be starting to understand what it is that you'd be learning if you joined one of our courses. Um, so yeah, there's um, a few different people listening and some of you may be thinking about the admin course, some of you may be ready to take the next steps into the admin course. So if, you, if you're brand new to Salesforce and thinking about, okay, I want to be a consultant, you do need to start with the admin course first because a consultancy course assumes a lot of knowledge um, around that so our next admin course is starting on the 4th of May in both the UK and the USA time zones um, so you can apply for that now um, as Nicola said the consultancy course is um, very much at your own pace so you can sign up when you're ready you can take it in sort of anything between 8 and 16 weeks um, so depending on how many hours each week you have got to commit to it you can learn at your own pace so the next steps are to um, get in touch with me. You should have my email address and certainly you'll get an email tomorrow with my details. Um, you can apply or book in a call to speak to me or my colleague in the US, Shellin, and we can talk you through your specific circumstances, what might be right for you, answer any final questions that you've um, got about the course. Just gonna check there haven't been any more questions just before we finish up here. No, I don't think so. So yeah, head to, there we go, head to, there we can see, you can download a pack for any of the courses we talked about today. You can book in a call with me or Shellin by heading to calony.com slash training and hopefully I'll speak to you soon. Um, and then if you search Supermums Global, we've got quite a lot of good stuff, especially in our Facebook group. If you're not already in that, it's quite active. And Heather recently did something called a five-day challenge in there, which is loads of content around helping you understand what Salesforce is if you're new to it. So do go back and look at all of that if you want to understand a bit more. Otherwise, um, thank you so much for spending a bit of time with us today. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you, Nicola, very much for joining us today. It was great to see you. Good luck. I'm sure you're going to um, do fantastically with all your grand plans. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Take care.